Ryland. Ryland. What? That's enough. Ryland. What? Quiet while I finish this video, please. Okay. Hey, Ryland. What? What you doing? Um, where did that thing up that fishing Hey, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Um, I'm hopping in today to film a quick video all about RV life with kids. And this is probably the biggest question or topic of questions we ever get asked is um, things surrounding our children and how we decided to do this and what are the hardest parts with kids and all of that. So I'm gonna answer a few of the top questions that we get the most and I hope that this helps you. Maybe you're planning on traveling with your kids or maybe you're just interested um, in what we do. But let's hop in because I do get questions quite frequently and I try and answer all of them in messages and on Instagram and things like that but this is a place where I can just put them all out there and maybe people who are researching can find a few things that we do and get inspired so to begin I think one of the biggest questions we get asked is is it hard um, traveling with kids and do the kids like it and we have been at this for almost a year and a half now and our kids love it they do excellent um, this is just their lives now and I think that is something to realize about kids um, as parents we're all very concerned about our kids um, safety and happiness and health and well-being and how they're gonna you know have a great childhood and overall they are super resilient to change um, even if you think your kid is kind of set in their ways, like our youngest was, he was set in his ways about where he liked to sleep in our apartment and all of that. Um, but they are so adaptable to change. And that is what is awesome about little kids. And especially, I mean, I'm speaking from experience of having a two year old and a four year old right now, but they are super adaptable and they have done everything with ease and with joy and I think that is something to realize about little kids I think that we are often much more scared about how they're gonna feel than they actually feel um, so overall our kids do love the experience they love knowing where we're going next they love helping us plan what we're gonna do um, they love talking about the places we're at all of that um, so yeah, I think if your biggest fear about trying to do something new with your kids is how they're going to take it, I think as long as you portray a good attitude about what you're doing and you show them that this is something fun, this is new adventure, um, depending on their age, of course, there's different variables that come into play, but for little kids, they fuel off of your energy. And Heath and I have always just been excited about what we're doing and they're always excited about what we're doing so that's that our kids like the experience they have loves living in the camper and I think overall that is one of the biggest concerns that I get asked um, from other moms and other parents so moving on next um, thing people ask all the time is how do they handle being in such a small space because you know kids love to play they love to run they love to jump and climb and all of that and I will say playing inside the camper doesn't happen like all day long um, for the most part we play outside with them um, we let them play outside ride bikes we spend a lot of our time outside of the camper um, but when I think back to when we had a house with a yard and all of that like my kids like to play outside anyway that's their personalities so they do enjoy playing inside say it's raining or um, early mornings when they wake up or before they go to bed they have toys in their back room and they do enjoy playing inside however it's not somewhere we usually spend like the entire day normally we take breaks and we go outside or we go somewhere to play or we find a local park or playground or somewhere indoor to play um, a museum or an amusement park or something we love to get out and do stuff so as a family that's kind of what we enjoy doing so we get out of the camper quite often um, but we also made sure that their room in the back has space for them to play so they have tons of toys um, they have a tent back there underneath the bunk they really have space to 
they, I mean, they build train tracks, they do all kinds of stuff. So something I get asked is, are, do they get bored in the small space? They do, but they get bored other places as well. Um, and I think a lot of kids who stay home in an apartment or home and things like that will also get bored with their same old toys every day and things like that too. So I don't think it's any different. Um, I don't think it's the space that necessarily might make them feel bored or want to go outside or whatever the case is. They, they just feel that way just because they are kids. And um, so overall, no, I don't think the space really affects that all too much. All right, so the next thing that I get asked probably almost every other day from people, especially in person when they see how our kids are wild and crazy, um, everyone asks us about sleep and do they sleep well and is it hard to get them down to sleep in such a small space um, and this is something that Heath and I talk about we like would like to work on um, because we just haven't been as consistent with like doing a full bedtime routine and getting them down like we were at the beginning of this journey um, but again a space I don't think really defines whether you're having trouble getting your kids down or not. Um, there's there's no reason that sleep schedules are any different here um, besides us letting them be different. So we do, we definitely have been doing a lot of things with friends and being places that are really fun and staying up late and letting the kids just kind of crash when they crash. But that's on us. I That has nothing to do with the actual camper life. So. I mean, there's a room in the back if your kids sleep in a bunk or if you have a crib in a room of your camper or anything like that, there's no reason I feel that you can't just shut the door and have a regular sleep routine, put them down at a regular time. We did that with Landon. He had a crib at the beginning and we had a sound machine in there and we put him down just like we would in any house. So he took naps and he went to bed and he did all of that on his own time. Now our kids do sleep on the couch instead of in the bunk room. So this is where it's a little bit different. Although if I turn off all the lights and the TV, they will fall asleep at whatever time, you know, I need to put them down at. And then our kids sleep through anything. So we can turn the TV back on and watch in our bedroom or anything and it doesn't really affect them. So for us, um, sleep schedules and all of that haven't been really a problem. Um, it's something I do want to work on making sure they go to bed earlier, but again, that is completely irrelevant to camper life. That's just something that we just have to do as parents and get back into the routine because we have been visiting so many people and doing so many things that every night has been late nights. Um, but like I said, I think it's totally doable to get your kids in bed at a certain time and have no issues with that just because you're in a camper. Um, most campers I see that families travel in have a room with a door um, for their kids. And as long as you have that, I mean, turn on music or a sound machine or something, and I don't see why there should be any difference than if you were in a normal house and putting your kids to bed. Okay, so I think what I wanna touch on next is traveling with them. So we have a pull behind camper, which means that we drive in our truck and our kids sit in their regular car seats and then we pull the camper behind us. Not everyone has that, not everyone's looking for that, but that's how we travel. Um, at the beginning, for the first maybe six months or so, we pretty much only did a day trip drive. So it would be maybe six or eight hours and we were at our destination. This time around the last like six, eight months, we have done much longer drives as we went out west and came back. So with that being said, we had to take a few days at a time and the kids got a lot more antsy. But um, again, it's just something that's part of our lives. So, you know, once every month or two, we have a long car drive. They really are do well in the car. And overall, it has not been too much of an issue for us. All right, so the kids are in here. They're playing around. He's starting to work, so I'm gonna finish this video up. But if there's anything else specific that you are interested in hearing about or a specific question or topic, please let us know because we love to help you guys out. And on that note, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.